a problem. Here we go. So, um, we need to find, if we're going to do this by definite integral, we need to know the bounds of the region. So how am I going to find this? Intersection. Intersection points, yes. If I said x squared plus 2 equal to 2x plus 5, we want to know the y's at which they're equal. So I set the two equations equal, and I get something like x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Factorable 2. Factorable 2. x minus 3, x plus 1. Pete was able to understand in my intonation, saying I wanted you to speak to a child. What are the intersections, are the limits of integration? Negative 1, 2. Three. Well done, well done. Okay. Now then, I have the reason. I need to establish my bases and heights. What's the base of all? I failed you. I just said the base is delta x, which approaches the x. Okay? Now, the bases of the rectangles. We, we want to, the name of the game is making a positive area. You will make a positive area if you make sure the bases are positive and the heights are positive. The bases will be positive if you go positive delta x. You'll go positive delta x if you go left to right. When you set up your limits then, they should always be lower to higher. If, on a multiple choice, you see them switch, then that is going to be messing with your area and it's going to make some negative bases. Always keep that in mind. Okay? Left to right. The heights... If I'm going to find this distance, let's call this height of this rectangle. Wouldn't it come from the difference between how high it is from the axis up to the line? Take away this little distance here. Wouldn't that leave me with the black? Yes. Total minus lower part leaves me upper part. In short, I could take the upper curve minus the lower curve, if the upper curve is greater and I subtract away a lesser, that will always yield a positive answer, right? Greater number minus a smaller number is always positive. So with those two components, if you do them well, your area will always come out positive and you will live a happy life. So now then, what will you integrate? Upper minus lower. What is the upper curve? The line or the parabola? The line. In that region, the line has greater y values, and the parabola has lesser y values. So by subtracting the line minus the parabola, we'll get positive values. All right, then. After that, uh, I guess I was supposed to do that there. There you go. Boom. Now we integrate. Um, shall I integrate the four terms or distribute the negative and get it down to three terms? Calculator, schmalculator. It says no calculator. Clearly, you're an AP English. You can't read that? AP? Do they teach you how to read? They don't? I thought that was st stuff you did in English. Negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. Antiderivative of negative x squared. Go. Quicker. Yeah, one third x two. Yeah. Third. Antiderivative of two x. Quicker. Square. That's better. You need to perform under pressure. Ellie, three, three. go. Quicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So from negative one to three, I uh, again my technique is that I do not reduce as I go because by doing so you'll always have nice like terms built in. So this is what I mean. I know that negative 27 thirds reduces, but I don't reduce it. Plus 9 plus 9 minus uh, negative 1 there would be a positive 1 third plus 1 minus 3. We The total of all the whole numbers. What's the total of all the whole numbers you see in there? Uh, I differ. 20. 18 minus negative 2. <laughs> 18 minus negative 2 is 20. And the total of the side numbers is negative 28 thirds. Sweet. Common denominator is? 
3, what's 60 thirds minus 28 thirds? 32 thirds. Is that positive? Yes. I can be at least certain that it's reasonable. All right, try one on your own. Try that one, please. Did you get something like 64 thirds? No? Yeah. All oh, right. That's something. Um, do you find intersection, do you agree with intersection points at 2 and negative 2? Yes. Okay. Do you agree that the upper curve is the downward opening parabola 4 minus x squared, and the lower curve is the upward opening parabola x squared minus 4? Therefore, it should be that with parentheses. Make sure that uh, you have parentheses and you distribute the negative properly. Um, I would suggest you combine my terms. Take the time to combine my terms so you have less terms to integrate. Um, and then check your antiderivative. Make sure you show your antiderivative. This is important in terms of the AP test and basically all calculus graded everywhere. They expect you to do a definite integral in two steps. Show the antiderivative, then show the numbers. If even as, as, no matter how easy it is, you should always show the antiderivative. Okay? And then check your arithmetic. Are we good? Okay. Would you now consider this graph? Now this actually was not what I wanted because this was two regions. So would you change this to e to the negative x squared? Uh, is that satisfactory? Let's make that e to the negative x. Let's call that this. 
So here, change that to y equals, well, let's call it 2 plus e to the negative x minus 1 squared. That is what I want. All right, in your calculator, would you graph those? And we're going to practice finding an area we have calculated. Change it to, sorry, I went too fast. E to the, y to the, well, I'll write it over here. Y equals 2 plus e to the negative x minus 1 quantity squared. <laughs> And then the other one was a parabola or something, such x squared plus one maybe. To get something that looks like that. Boom. Uh, what's the end behavior of the E curve, my friends? Two. Yes, there's a horizontal asymptote at two. It goes to two in both positive and negative directions. All right. So, how do I find yield area by the count? What do you reckon we should do first? Find the interest. Find the intersection points. Okay, so you find the intersection points. If you're having an issue there, then ask me. The leftmost point, I'm getting negative 1.008. I would store that. If you're not getting more than three decimals, then you should probably change the adjustments to your calculator, adjust your calculator so you are. Intersection point on the right. Why do I keep doing that? Do, 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 do. Flannery, how you doing back there, bud? Good, good. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Are you getting the same intersection points? Negative one-ish and one point three six-ish. All right. Cool. Um, in terms of what to write both in my class and on the AP test, it is expected that you communicate those intersection points um, in your definite integral with three or more decimals. So negative 1.00. Get back. I should probably. No, that's okay. We'll talk about that on the AP test. Negative 1.00. Was it four? Nine. Nine to one point. I got a short term memory. One point three six nine. Thank you. One point three six nine. Now, I communicated in here, but I'll reiterate. Um, if they name these functions f and g, then you most certainly can use f and g in your integrand and call it f minus g. If, however, they name them y, then you most definitely cannot say the integrand is y minus y. That's ridiculous. So. In this case, because the names were y-ish, you must express the functions. dx is the base. So what's the height? How do you find the height in a fashion that makes it positive? e minus parabola or parabola minus e? e minus parabola. e's on top. e's the upper. So I need to take the e curve. 2 plus e to the negative x minus 1 quantity squared minus um, the x squared plus 1. Express your definite integral that way, showing the limits, showing the integrand, and then you may use your calculator to evaluate. So go to your scratch pad, the old shift plus a to b. Is that what I stood for? Okay, so I have. 
parentheses. Will it be okay with not putting parentheses? Or would it put the parentheses in for you? That was nice. How about 2.4155? Do we all concur? Okay. All right. So that's what it'll look like one area with time. Are we cool so far? All right. Sometimes the curves take a lot of turns, or they give you artificial bounds, and you get more than one. So towards that end, uh, a good example is, say I asked for the area, the total area between, uh, notice not, not enclosed by, but between, okay? The total area between the parabola, y equals x squared, and the line, negative x plus 2, on negative 2 to 2. This is what you would call a, a given boundary. So you're only finding, you're finding area between the curves on that region. <clears throat> now, you need to get a little more here. Um, for example, I, something special is happening there, and then I'm getting a handoff from one situation to the other. So you still need to find the intersection point. x squared equals negative x plus 2. Negative two and positive one. Do you agree with those? Okay. At least it seems to match my picture. Now negative two is nice because not only is that an intersection point, but that's also the left edge of the boundary. So we're starting at the left intersection point. We're finding area between curves. So we're finding the area of these rectangles. Now, the intersection point there is 1, but it says we're supposed to keep finding area between the curves all the way up to 2. Now, if I keep going to 2, then I'm going to start to get some area between curves over here as well, yeah? What if I just do, if I do line minus parabola here, Will it be positive or negative? Positive. positive. But if I do line minus parabola here, will I get positive or negative? Negative. Now, I don't want negative area. Negative area is bad. At least when it says to find the area. If I then select one integral at this, I wouldn't be finding total area. I'd be finding net area. This positive area, take away this area in a negative fashion. I don't want to do that. So I must use, if, if the slices all end up with the same upper and lower, cool, you could do one integral. But if the slices change over a different, over to a different upper minus lower, then you have to use two integrals. So you will, for example, need one integral from negative two up to, when does that first region end? One from the basis will be made positive by dx. What's the upper minus lower heights to make them positive? Line minus the problem. So negative x plus two minus x squared. I don't really need those parentheses because x squared is a single term. All right, that'll be region one. Then how do I find the area at region two in a way that'll make it positive? From where to where? from 1 to 2, and what will the integrand have to be? Parabola minus line. Now that I do need parentheses. Okay, so if you get a different region where you hand off into a totally different upper minus lower, you need to go to integrate. If I then integrate, one, negative x squared plus 2 minus x squared, and then integrate x squared plus x minus 2, then my antiderivative will be negative 1 third x cubed plus 2x minus that's 
plus t squared. Negative one half x squared plus two x minus one third x cubed. So negative two one plus one third x cubed plus one half x squared minus two x. Variations from one to two. Uh, lots to keep command of, so be careful, be careful. All right, so at one, I have negative one half plus two minus one third. And at negative two, I have negative four halves minus four plus eight thirds. The second integral, maybe eight thirds plus four halves minus four minus one third plus one half minus two. In here, I get a total of negative one half plus four halves is three halves plus six minus nine thirds. Over here, I get seven thirds plus three halves minus two. Three halves plus three halves is six halves, or three plus four minus two thirds, seven minus two thirds is nine third or nineteen thirds. How'd you do there? Did you win? Can you get through the arithmetic? That's the question. Okay, good feedback, good feedback. Thank you. Um, try this one on your own. See how it goes. No calculator. Calculators for the week. Don't be weak, Brian, but man up. Be tough. No. It's a crutch. It's a crutch. Oh, there's, uh, the can drive is this week, and it's I guess it's third hour. So if you can remember, write yourself a note. I will try and do the same actually. For yes. um, be cool. Share what you have with people. Or Very common people make errors with zeros because they feel like zero won't amount to anything, so they just blow it off completely. That is dangerous. Not always true. How are we doing? I get negative 2 plus 1 over a squared plus c squared. You agree? Okay. If you don't agree, let me know what you have questions. Okay. Uh, let's try one more. 
ugly one, and we're going to talk about this two ways and what multiple choices might look like, and then we'll be done. Would you put those two functions in your calculator? X plus Plus two and plus two and plus two. Okay, I get graphs that look like that. How about you? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, tell me why I can't just slap one big fat integral at this, baby, with no adjustments. Because? Because it doesn't work. That's true. Why not? Because upper minus lower is two totally different situations there. So you'd be getting negative area in one place versus the other. Now that said, with a calculator, you could actually do this with one. One integral will work if you go far left to far right and use what? How do I remove the issue of upper minus lower there is negative? Absolute value, using absolute value. Okay, so one possibility is to find the left and right edges only, not the interior, just the left and right edges. We get negative 2.297 for the left edge. Zero, zero, 004 for the right edge. 2.297. Okay. Um, so, how can I use one integral only and get rid of that up that upper that upper minus lower negative problem? What would you do? Would it matter what I put in the absolute value? F minus G or G minus F, or it wouldn't matter if I was using absolute value? It would matter, okay? You can absolutely use the names F and G in there. Um, would this also do it? Would this work? I see this a lot. Would that be finding what I want to find? No, it wouldn't. This is total area. This is net area made positive. Okay, that is not what you want. This, is, this will not be the same. Okay, you need to take steps to make the heights positive, and then the area will be total. All right. If you do that, you get a total of. <laughs> What's the name of that? Green sleeve musician. Green sleeve? Is that what it's called? Green sleeve? That's how it's published. Green sleeve, green sleeve. Green sleeve. That's the Jeepers Creepers, right? Jeepers. Man, I should sing that song. Have you guys ever heard that song? Jeepers Creepers? No. Jeepers, Jeepers Creepers. Creepers. Where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers Creepers. Where'd you get those eyes? 
Kind of shit. Those are real songs. All right, um, that's one way to do it. So let's show two different ways. What's another way to do it besides one integral absolute value? More likely we would do it without a calculator, which is? Scream into the void and cry for a while and then do the math. I wouldn't even know where to find the void. Where? Inside myself. I don't have a void inside myself. I feel soft. It's going to stop that. Stop. Okay. You do too much reading. That's crazy. Watch the TV. All right. Um, so, you can find the middle intersection point, yes? Are you tracking here? Yeah. Now, I have, uh, in order to uh, do a little bit of multiple choice possibilities, I want to actually go through the rigmarole of finding this because I do want to talk about one more thing. Let's see. 0.897. Okay. All right. I could also go from negative 2.97 to 0.897. I think that was what it was. 0.897. Um, in that first integral, would I do cube minus sinusoid or sinusoid minus cube? Cube minus sinusoid. Okay, so that is F minus G. Okay. The next region, however, the sinusoid's on top. So I'd go from 0.897 in the middle intersection to the right edge, 2.100, and I'd go G minus F. Wait. All right. Now let's talk possible multiple choice. So see in a multiple choice test that they could throw this combined with a few other skills. What if it was this um, minus f minus g? Is that okay? Is that the same? This would be negative heights, so it's looking like negative area, but this is making it not negative. So is that okay? That would be okay. What if they said the same thing plus 2.100 to 0.897 of G minus seven? This is positive heights, right? Because that's cube on, uh, was that on top? Yeah. That's sinusoid, so this is positive heights. Is that okay? Well, yes. But what about this? If it goes from 2.1 to 0.897, that's going left, yeah? And what is delta x if I go left? Negative. That's negative bases, and so that would not be okay because this would be negative area. Not okay. What if they put a negative with that change? Would that be cool? Oops, with that change, dummy. Would that be cool? Yes. Thankfully, I still have one person with me. I'll take it. That would be okay. And you could even go three changes. Negative, switched, and F minus G. In that case, that would be three negatives, and that's bad. Okay, well... That was good. That was good. Well done. Well done. Um, let's go to your fun sheet. Fun sheet. Fun sheet. Fun sheet. Fun sheet. Fun sheet. Fun What did you get for A? For one. One, one. B? It was B. Okay. If you integrate the rate from 0 to 6, I called this R so I didn't have to keep writing this. Which I am fine with as long as you identify R. Don't just start calling it all for a reason. That is 78. Wait, wait. Wait. I think in number two, I changed this to 200. Did I not? 
I think I did. I think you are changing class. In class? Yeah, we're all giving your like changes to Oh, well, it's just a little secret between Brian and I. The rest of you. Yep. Forget it. Okay. The unfortunate part is that from zero to 20, it was removing more than 100 gallons. Uh, I don't want to go into negative gallons. That's silly talk. So I wanted it to be 200 gallons. Now, the amount at time 20, I'll call let A equal the amount of oil. Anytime you introduce a new variable, you should identify what the heck it stands for. At A at 20, is, well, how much gallon oil there actually is would depend on two things. How much it started with, or some initial condition, and how much it changed by. In this case, I'm saying it starts with 200. Now, if I have a rate of change in gallons per minute, I can find out how much it changes by taking that gallons per minute and multiplying by minutes and adding infinitely many little calculations of gallons per minute times minutes, and the area under the curve would be gallons. So, I find area of the curve by integrating 0 to 20 of whatever you call the function. I called it our PPG. If you start at 200, you'll get some answers. 61? Okay, 360. Now that's good because that gives me an answer that makes absolutely zero sense. What happened there? Why did I get more oil when oil is getting removed? Because it's getting removed in the rate or my math is stupid. Yeah. In terms of, they're not going to do everything for you. If you, if this is the rate of removal, then you should have opposite signs. So, so this shouldn't be plus, it should be minus because we're subtracting by that rate. So that's more like 35, 36 or something like that? 39.448 and those are gallons. We? Uh, that's Sorry. All right, gallons. Okay, now use that as a guide. We, this gives you amount of 20. Use that as a guide to find out how you would do amount at any time. Instead of amount at 20, we'll do amount at any time. And I'll have to do two things, starting amount plus change, or minus change. Uh, so 200 minus, instead of going from 0 to 20, I want to go from 0 to, so I definitely need a variable in there. Shall I put x here and t here? Or T there, X there. Make your case for T up in the limits. So why isn't why isn't this A of T? Yeah, when you integrate this, it would be a function of T, but then what goes in for that T? X. So it would end as a function of X, right? So that's not okay. It has to be t here so that it ends the function of t and along the way we'll just carry along the dummy variable the x or whatever you be the so I guess I never understood why we needed the dummy variable if what would if, if they were both t wouldn't it just remain t that's true um, it would it would accomplish the goal of making a function of t what it does is it basically is violating the idea of one variable for one thing only you can't generate I can't let t represent all the points on this curve to generate the curve and simultaneously let it equal some defined endpoint that we're finding the area of. So, so it's really using a variable in two fashions that represent two things. That's why the dumb variable. Right? Um, so without solving, give an equation that could be used to find when there is no more oil left in the tank. What would you do? If there's no more oil, then what has to happen? Equal to zero. Okay, so you, I could see one of two ways. I could say, set this equal to zero. This would work because we want the amount to be zero. That's definitely reasonable. That works. What's another way that might you might see from a student? 
the equation for r equal to could is would this be okay or would it have to be the integral of that yeah it would have to be the amount removed would it have to equal 200 that What? Oh, you said. I said R equal to zero. Um, oh, what would that be defining? Because I thought that as soon as like it was empty, that that was under the assumption that that was not like. Oh yeah, no, I doubt that the model knows when it's done. If you're thinking the model would zero out when it's, it, I yeah. doubt that. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, oops, that was actually okay. Okay. Um, Let's go to the old supermarket problem. The rate at which people enter a supermarket, so enter, not the change in the number of people, just entering. There could be leaving people, there could be people to start with, so many things going on, so don't read too much into it. So the nearest people, how many people entered the supermarket? So if you have a rate of change in people per hour, to get total number of people, you would make many little people per hour times hour calculation. Yeah? So did you use an integral? Fundamental theorem, straight up 6 to 22. And that comes out to what? A, B, C, D, or E? I got D. Okay. Okay. For the function s of t above, which of these explains the meaning of that integral? D. So this is a rate of enter in people per hour, right? Times hours, dt is hours, gives you an amount people. Enter six to eight. So, is it true that it's the number of people in the supermarket? No, I don't know how many people were there from the starting with, from the left. It's way too much. How about people in the market from six to eight? Same issue. There could be leaving, there could be starting, so that's not it. Change in the number of people, that's tempting, yes? But it's wrong because, again, I don't know how many are leaving and all that stuff. What I can be sure of is that this relates to how many enter. Enter. And so it is D. It is D. Always. Okay? When in doubt. Or when in doubt, figure out what the heck is going on and actually do the prop problem. I got when in doubt, math it out. Alright. Um, if L of T is the rate at which people leave the supermarket and P of 6 is the number of people in the supermarket, write an equation rounding and integral for the amount of people at any time. So, A at T, what did you call it? I can imagine three things going into this. P of 6, the starting number of people at time 6. Plus the integral from? T to X. T to X. No, no, sorry. T to the 6 to T of? S. So I have enter and leave, right? Yeah. Which of those adds to the number of people? Enter. Enter, so S. And how many uh, leave subtract? So, do I need to do this in two integrals, or could I do it in one? Or would both? You could do it in one or two. So let's say I just did a big fat net rate. What's the net rate of change? S sub t minus L of, but not t, right? Because I need a dummy variable. So S of x minus L of x dx. That'll do it. Did you get that? Yes. You could do that in two integrals. Well. Okay. Um, for three, I chose. What did you choose? I also chose C. Okay. That required a use of. 
It, it, well, at least that's why I did it. Maybe you could do without it, but I did it by use. How? First of all, why? Let's go with why. Why would you use you so? Because it's a function within a function. Okay, so that to me says, all right, function within a function, use you so. If u is 4 minus x, then du is negative dx, so dx is negative du. At that point, then, this becomes f of u times negative du. Changing the limits, when x is 2, u is 4 minus 2, so 2. When x is 6, u is 4 minus 6, so negative 2. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I, I didn't see negative 2 to 2 in there, but I did. I felt like I could find negative 2 to 2 because I had negative 2, had negative 2 to 6 and 2 to 6. So I can find this by subtracting these two, right? Are you with me? However, I need to be organized. First of all, I don't like greater to lower. So I'm going to switch these. When I switch the limits of integration, what has to happen? You negate. Now, thankfully, I already have a negation. So I'm just going to switch this from negative 2 to 2. And those two negatives knock each other out. You with me? How fair is Oh, man. Tell your mom you're a dad. Oh. <laughs> All right, so from negative 2 to 2, whether you show this stuff or not is fine, but I would go 2 to 6 minus <laughs> negative 2 to, sorry, negative 2 to 6 minus 2 to 6. And the Jewish public, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, we're going to go to the next step. I'm going to make sure that you're going to be retired. I'm going to be retired. I'm going to be retired. That's the idea. We'll finish one order tomorrow. Oh, that's crazy. Two fifty I 